Today, we are gonna talk about my thoughts around radio frequency ablation. So, the most common locations that people are gonna have radio frequency ablation is going to be in the lower back, the neck, the thoracic spine, for the, uh, the medial cutaneous branches of the dorsal rami as they're innervating the facet joint. So a lot of the times this is done for facet mediated pain. Sometimes this can be done for sacroiliac joints, although the, uh, the research on that's a little mixed. And then uh, also as well, the knee joint, the uh, genicular nerves can be uh, burned, essentially for lack of a better term, uh, in order to help patients with pain. I've had several questions about this uh, over the last, I don't know, month or two, and so I wanted to just in video format talk about my thoughts around this. So for those of you who aren't aware, radio frequency ablation is basically taking an electrode, putting it up to the nerve, and then turning the electrode on very high in order to basically cauterize or burn the nerve, okay? They're actually doing an ablation of the nerve with electricity. Now, what does this do? Well, in, in a nutshell, this basically kills the nerve. Uh, it, uh, it cauterizes it so that way it does not send pain signals. So is it an effective way to decrease uh, or eliminate pain? Yes, because you, uh, when done properly in a technically correct way, because it's not always done in a technically correct way, then it does uh, kill the nerve and it does reduce pain. But here's the problem, and what I actually find super ironic, is over time, that pain is very, very likely to come back. Usually it takes anywhere from about six months to a year. Uh, some people have shorter relief, other people have longer relief. I've, I think the longest I've seen is about two, three years. But the pain comes back. Why? The nerve regenerates. The nerves literally regenerate and your body makes new connections, it grows new little nerve endings, and it goes to try and innervate that joint again. So it's not a long-term solution for pain, and honestly, in my opinion, it's a pretty barbaric approach to addressing the pain that is coming from the facet joints. My preferred approach is actually just to address the facet joints and resolve the inflammation and instability in that joint that is contributing to a lot of that pain. So that way the nerve is not firing off all the time. And then you actually get to have pain relief without having to burn the nerves. It's still done because insurance covers it. And if you're in a situation where you know you cannot afford anything else and you know that the pain's likely gonna come back and you understand what the procedure is and the risks, then you get to make that call. I'm not here to judge anybody's decisions on what they do for their chronic pain. I'm just here trying to discuss different options for people uh, so that way if, they, if it doesn't resonate with you to go and have uh, a nerve ablation, then you know, you have some other ideas on it. So that is my quick two cents on radio frequency ablation uh, for usually for chronic back pain. And I'm just not a fan. See you later, everybody.